Okay, I went ahead and switched over to my master set three jaw. I did have the pie jaws on there. Um, the nice thing about a buck chuck, went ahead and cleaned the top of this up and took off the main tool um, just so I don't hear any flack from anybody in their comments. But uh, just so you guys know, that was just a just a joke. Yeah, you shouldn't be operating machinery under any influence whatsoever. <clears throat> okay, so anyhow, went in and pulled out my uh, indicator and put in a, uh, this is A2 tooling, uh, tool steel. And uh, I went ahead and machined this earlier with the live center. This is actually a tool now uh, for, it's, a, it's actually a fly cutter. I can show it to you later. But I made this on this, I made the whole thing on, on, on this lathe. Um, so anyhow, but I know it's running r really concentric uh, to these two surfaces. Uh, I went ahead and uh, checked it. It's within, well, it's, it's well within any measurements that I'm going to be looking for. The concentricity, concentricity of this is within two ten thousandths between the two surfaces. <clears throat> so long story short, um, just showing you that anytime you take uh, or just every so often you should check the buck chucks because they do move around a little bit and um, this is not my bison, this is actually my TMX. The TMX is just as good as any bison. Um, I've ran the, uh, all kinds of American made chucks. Uh, this actually is a wonderful chuck, the TMX for a uh, ex again extremely good price so I went ahead and checked it and I haven't when I first put this on here I went ahead and trued it up I got it in within at least a thou of concentricity and I've been running it profusely with those pie jaws on it running heavy parts um, got at least a hundred hours on here swapping jaws in and out in and out uh, set these master jaws back in here and if you can get that, I will put this in neutral. So it's a little easier to turn. And uh, this is a, it's not a tenth indicator. It's uh, by thousandths. So, there you go. Uh, let me go ahead and zero this out. Make everyone happy. These are uh, extremely sensitive little tools, as everyone should know. So at least you know it's on a zero. Let's see if I can get my cell phone to focus. There it goes. So we are one thou on one side of the zero. Bring it back half a thou. So really, I've only moved five ten thousandths on this chuck, and now that could be as simply as is how I chuck this into here, because I didn't take any precautions. I basically just threw it in there, slapped it in there. Um, so if I were to center this and uh, and get this thing zeroed, which I'm going to do here real real quickly because I'm I'm anal retentive on on my measurements. Why I settled for a thou the first time, I don't know. Um, I'd like to see within a, a couple tens, ten thousandths. I'd like to see it move between, you know, here, let's say where it's at there, and there, max. So, like, if it was moving in a full revelation between there and there, which would be five ten thousandths thereabouts, it'd be nice if I had a tenth indicator. Uh, don't have one here, they're all at the shop. But I'll go ahead and buck it in, and I'll show you exactly what that'll look like here in a second. Here we are after bucking this in, and in case you're not familiar with the buck chuck, um, sorry about the wobble there. Basically, these these back screws inside the buck chuck. Here's your scroll chuck key, which will scroll uh, your jaws in and out, your three jaws. Then you have a, a secondary, it's like a four jaw in the back, which can move this buck chuck around. It, you know, I I don't know what the actual tolerance is. I'm pretty sure you can at least move it 100 thou, um, but you got, you know, one, two, three, and four. So you can um, get this scroll chuck on the master um, 
master jaws bucked in so to where it's running concentric again so anyhow I got this close to the zero uh, this it does read in five ten thousand so every line is five ten thousandths every second line is a thou uh, and you can see rolling this it's kind of hard because my hands moving but I'm I'm rolling the chuck you can see I'm I'm pretty much in the center of the five ten thousandths so I'm running concentric within at least two ten thousandths if I had a tenth indicator then you know between the one and the or the zero and the five would actually be one thousand so then I can see exactly how many ten thousandths I'm out of concentricity but for what I'm doing in my house uh, home projects and and my uh, experiments and whatnot I'm actually should be plenty fine within that couple ten thousandths so there's the buck chuck I've showed you the pie jaws uh, master jaws now what I'm going to do now I got that running concentric I'm going to go ahead and take uh, these are two-way master jaws so you can this is you can grab these with the OD um, and uh, you can grab ID with the same set and uh, actually in this particular case I can even grab an 8 inch tube with this and hold this and use the face of this as my uh, datum and then support that back here with my live center three jaw which I'll show you again somewhere else down the line but for now <clears throat> just showing you a bucket in the buck chuck and uh, you should do this on a regular basis you know if you, you're swapping jaws in and out quite a bit uh, it only takes a second to throw uh, your test tool in there and throw an indicator on there and see where you are like I did and, and I was out you know five ten thousandths what I originally set it off and I I wasn't too critical at, at the time which kind of surprised me because I'm pretty critical with what I'm doing generally all the time but you can see that that's running relatively true as all your tooling should be and if you're a, a, a machinist um, you know plus or minus two thousand should be like throwing a hot dog down a hallway um, unless you're just screwing around but uh, in the world of machining plus or minus two thousandths is a wide berth anyhow long story short when I pull off the indicator um, this was uh, a drop out of an old flame cut of a different project but this will set up in there and I'll hog this down and make a band and uh, I'll show you that here in a second again super impressed with this little lathe uh, the TMX chuck and the Shars tooling um, I'm used to Kenna Metal, Bridgeport and um, uh, Morsikis and uh, you know all the name brand stuff uh, Rami's um, and I picked, the, picked this guy up uh, through quality machine tools online and highly impressed I, I've been you know I don't know how far as as far as commercial can go um, there's been a couple things here and there um, that we've had issues with but nothing that you know to be expected on a Chinese lathe but for a Chinese lathe or Taiwan either way it's it's all the same the only difference is a little bit in the casting um, you know I got it's all leveled out with a machinist level and I got these foot pads down here it's on a concrete solid slab um, I've had a problem with the foot brake um, and I've, I, I'm going to be repairing that here soon uh, when it came to me the lead screw was bent um, probably during loading it on their pallet or whatever they probably strapped it with a strap or something and put pressure on it but they sent me a new lead screw within a few days um, and now I'm just waiting to get the parts for um, the actual foot brake uh, assembly and it's just a cam bolt uh, that, that got bent um, you know taking it for what it was I was pushing the limits on this thing and had the uh, pie jaws in there swinging a 12 inch piece of material and and had it going around I don't know let's see I think I was running pretty fast like 755 rpm 12 inches and I you know throttled the brake down to see what how it handle it and probably a little too much for this machine but again I wanted to see where I was it's got a two-year warranty on the parts I might as well test it now so everything's been running pretty decent it's got uh, pretty good uh, selection as far as the uh, speeds and feeds and uh, threading I haven't done any threading on it yet but that'll be a different date different time forward reverse pretty sweet it's got the coolant I just went and purchased some um, coolant that'll be running the coolant system here I got to build me a chuck shield that'll be shielding my chuck and and my workpiece 
Um, it does have a gap in it. And this gap you can, if you put like the faceplate and you're going to do some heavy working or large thin working, uh, you can take this out and you can actually spin a 19 and 3 quarter inch piece in here, which is pretty impressive. And that's kind of why I went with this. I do a lot of thin work, large thin work. Um, that is going to be like, uh, let's see here. You know, here's, here's some of the tubing that I've trimmed off with it. And I will do a lot of plate work like this uh, with pressed in bearings and stuff. I guess if you want to look at it, uh, it's just very, very large plumbing. So, um, but all the other clearances seem to be working real well. But if I got this specifically with a gap in it, because yeah, I, I do run into instances where I'm, I'm going to be spinning uh, 16, 17 inch pieces off of this uh, to, for specific jobs. But I haven't used it yet, but when I do, I'll definitely report on it. Okay, buck chuck is dialed in, it's running concentric. Um, that should be good now. Now again, if you throw your pie jaws back on there and you're running out of con concentric, anytime you, you throw your pie jaws back on there, freshen up your pockets. Only taking 10 thou off, you should be fine. And maybe I'll put a video in there on how to do that with the spiders and all that kind of good stuff. So I'll put this piece in there and uh, we'll go from there.